Hi everyone, uh, my name is Talia. I am a PhD student here at the university. Um, and I'm going to be talking to you all about echidnas. Yay, they're adorable, they're the best things ever. Um, and just to shout out, all of the photos that are throughout this presentation have been from this uh, citizen science project. So these are all photos that people have submitted so far and there are some incredible ones. Um, so, to get started. No, oh, there we go. Uh, so, echidnas are one of the most incredible animals, which I didn't even realise until I started studying them. Not only are they ridiculously adorable, um, but they are one of the oldest mammals surviving today. The, uh, echidnas and the platypus, their lineage has been around for almost 200 million years. Uh, and some incredible things about their behaviour, they are avid swimmers. Uh, <laughs> you've seen some adorable videos of them. Um, literally swimming in the ocean or across, across rivers. Uh, they also like to climb. I don't know if you knew that, but uh, if you give them some chicken wire, they will climb meters and meters and meters high. Um, but their reproduction is incredibly um, different as well, especially to all other mammals. Uh, during their breeding season, they make these echidna trains, which is literally one female at the front, followed by all of these males behind her, all trying to compete and mate for her. And then, as most people would know, echidnas lay eggs. So these eggs are about the size of a grape, um, and the echidnas only last in the eggs for 10 days until they hatch. So then they look like this, which they are about the size of your thumbnail, uh, and incredibly um, like see-through, because they're actually going through skin respiration for the first few days. Uh, and then they grow incredibly rapidly into this adorable little <laughs> ball of spikes. Uh, and this is within about 50 days um, going between the jelly bean to that. Uh, and baby echidnas are called a puggle, by the way. Fun facts. Um, so even though we are starting to know more about echidnas, about their wild populations, though, we have almost zero data. Uh, they, if you Google a map, a distribution map of echidnas, this is what you get. You get Australia covered in one solid colour. You don't get dots, you don't get a, like a grading or anything. That's what you get because they are so hard to study in the wild, so we don't have these records yet, uh, which is pretty incredible for such an iconic Australian animal. And as Chris Helgen said yesterday, if we don't have this data on these animals on these plants, on our biodiversity, how are we ever meant to protect them? The only two populations that have been well studied so far is uh, Tasmania and Kangaroo Island. So um, I'm not sure how many of you know Peggy uh, Reese miller She is an incredible researcher, has been living on Kangaroo Island and studying echidnas for the past 30 years and has been the driver of knowing as a lot about their biology. Um, but from her research, have found that the echidnas on Kangaroo Island are now endangered. So they've been officially listed as endangered, um, which brings about the question of what's happening with the rest of echidnas around mainland Australia. Um, they are facing the exact same threats uh, as the ones on Kangaroo Island. They are um, attacked and killed by cats um, on Kangaroo Island anyway, and so there's probably those um, instances of them as well as foxes and dingoes on mainland. Uh, they're also very common roadkill uh, and just suffer from the general things that most of our um, native fauna do is habitat loss, habitat degradation. So it's really important that we start to understand more about echidnas around the rest of Australia. So there are some key questions that we are very, uh, in particular, interested in. First of all is, you know, where exactly are they right now so that we can actually track that through time? because as we are in such a changing world at the moment, we need to know what's happening right now so that we can see how their populations are moving, how they're changing. We're also really interested in their diet. So echidnas are known as anteaters, um, but that's not necessarily all they eat. So um, just from anecdotal evidence of, you know, Peggy and um, her husband Mike watching echidnas, I've noticed that they eat things like grubs and slice them open and suck them up. Um, but those aren't things that you see physically in their scats on the other side, uh, which you do see um, a lot of ants. So we want to know exactly what insects they actually are eating. 
We're also really interested in their genetic diversity, which is what all of those lovely coloured circles represent. Um, basically, the more genetic diversity in a population, the more likely it is to last in the future. So we need to be able to quantify that now um, to figure out what are their chances. Also for um, captive breeding, it's incredibly important to find out um, how genetically diverse they are so we don't uh, incorporate more inbreeding. We're also interested in stress levels. So um, echidnas, you know, sort of pop up everywhere, um, including people's backyards. So we want to know, um, is that having an effect on their health? Or do they not really care? And they, you know, might enjoy living with us. Who, who, who knows? Um, and lastly is about their reproductive system. So we want to know how often echidnas are breeding in the wild, if there are particular areas that are having a larger boom than others and why that may be so. And of course, we're really interested in knowing about all of these different things for all different populations around Australia, which is a pretty big task. Australia is a very large place, um, but echidnas in you know, Northern Territory Queensland are going to be very different from echidnas that are here in South Australia or in Tasmania. And they do inhabit ranges um, from you know, snow to, to desert. Um, so it's really important that we find out all of this different information. Uh, so that is sort of where Echidna CSI started. We wanted to be able to um, gather data from across the entire continent. Uh, and just speaking to people on a regular basis, um, they would always tell stories of, you know, I just saw an echidna pop up the other day, I just saw them on my bushwalk, um, they're in my backyard all the time, they're on my properties. And so we wanted to utilise that information rather than it just being, you know, what people said. Um, and actually start gathering that as real hardcore data. So what we did was we developed an app called Echidna CSI, free, download, download it now, um, and asked people to do two things, uh, to start taking photos of echidnas whenever they saw them, so that we can start getting an actual distribution map of exactly where they are, and secondly is to collect their poo. So I now getting regular mail of poo every week, which is interesting. <laughs> Um, so why, why am I asking for poo? Well, I am a molecular biologist, actually. Um, ecology is not my forte. Uh, and the reason that we're asking for the scats is because basically it's the answer to all of these questions. Uh, apart from the photos obviously giving us a distribution map, the scats, there is an abundance of DNA in scats. You can get DNA from the echidna itself which you know, they can figure out if that echidna was a boy or a girl. We can figure out if that, um, the entire genetic code of that echidna, uh, and then we can find out things about the genetic diversity of echidnas throughout Australia. There's also the DNA from the food it has just eaten, so we can know exactly what species they are eating based off of that DNA. There's also DNA from the bacteria that's living inside of their gut, which depending on what species we find there will be an indication of how healthy they are. And then there's also a range of hormones in echidna scats too. So there's stress hormones. Uh, as the hormones are running through your body, they're also um, being excreted out into your scats. And so that um, can be measured. And basically, it's, uh, if you've got a big spike in a, uh, in a hormone uh, at that, in that scat, then you can safely say that it is a stressed animal. Uh, and similar for reproductive system as well. We can measure things like progesterone in females and testosterone in males to understand if an echidna is, fem uh, is if a female echidna is pregnant, if a male has really high testosterone levels, it's probably actively breeding, and et cetera. I'm just gonna check how long I am with time. Okay, awesome. Yeah, go, quick. Uh, <laughs> um, so we launched Echidna CSI in September last year. Uh, and we had this really big media launch, um, went to the Adelaide Zoo because the idea was that the news crews could get the video footage of the echidna that was uh, in, the, in its enclosure and that could be some nice little visual footage without interviews. Um, but no one could find it. Uh, <laughs> so that was, that was a really good start to our project and really um, cemented that we needed other people to help us find echidnas because... Um, you know, we can't, we can't do it ourselves. They, are, they literally just disappear in front of your eyes or they are incredibly good hiders. Um, so to date, we have uh, over 4,000 people subscribed through our app. 
So once you actually open the app, there's just things about putting in your email address and everything. So people do have the option to skip that. We try to encourage them not to. So those are the people who have actually registered through the app. Uh, this morning, we had 1,941 submissions, and I'm just like counting the days until we crack that 2,000 mark. Uh, and I haven't actually counted, but I think at, in my freezer right now, there's about 120 scats that have been sent through. Uh, so just quickly, this is a graph of the amount of uh, submissions each day since September through to the end of February. I don't have marches in there yet. Uh, and basically what I want to point out are these peaks. So um, throughout this project, we've had quite a bit of media attention. And so the first um, peak on that side is from uh, straight after we had a Totally Wild episode release. Um, the next one was Atlas of Living Australia have written a blog post about us that was shared through the CSIRO. Um, and so that got quite a few, like I think another 500 downloads pretty much overnight from that. Um, I can't remember what the third one was, but the last one um, was the um, Threatened Species Commissioner shared about us on Facebook and that came with another um, few hundred uh, new downloads as well. And uh, the one in, there's one in March which had the biggest one, The Guardian had written an article about us um, and that just went crazy. We got double the amount of downloads than we had before that. So that was really, really cool. Uh, so the media is incredibly powerful for spreading these projects. Um, but, um, so, and this is the distribution map that we've created so far. So this is from the almost 2,000 submissions. Um, as you can see, we're getting a lot of submissions mo mainly around where there's more people. Um, so what I'm really interested now is to start getting into those more rural communities, getting into indigenous communities so that we can get that centre um, part of Australia where um, we know from talking to other people, oh, that's my alarm going off. Um, Okay, cool. Um, yeah, talking to other people that they are probably there, but we haven't been able to reach those communities yet. So I'm really interested in um, if anyone uh, has any partnerships or any communication with that side of things, I would be really interested in talking to you to figure out how we can um, spread this a little bit further. Uh, just in South Australia, this is what we um, have so far. So again, more with the populated areas, but we are getting a reasonably good spread at the moment. Um, and just delving in, this is Adelaide. You can see there's pretty much echidnas almost in like the centre of Adelaide. Like that's the bottom of the freeway coming into the city. And there's a, there's a huge community apparently of echidnas that live there. Um, so that's what I mean. They pop up everywhere. It's, it is insane. I never thought that they would be that close to the city. So, oops, back to that. So a lot of this project has also been about public engagement, public outreach. We need, we want people to know about us, but we also want to get more people involved in citizen science in general. So a couple of weekends ago, we actually held a citizen science day here at the uni, um, which had um, Sylvia's back project as well as um, uh, Jasmine's uh, fungi map project there as well to showcase more about what citizen science is all about. So I'm really interested in you know, getting more out there, doing more public engagement, doing more education, been talking to a lot of school groups as well, which has been really, really interesting um, and really fun and I really love it. We actually went to Morialta Park last weekend and had a whole group um, of a lot of young families with like kids that were like this big uh, who were getting incredibly excited, like jumping up and down because we went to like look out for a kidna poo. Um, <laughs> And there was a lot of other poo. There was a lot of um, kangaroo poo, a lot of koala poo um, that all of the kids were like, is this it? Is this it? No, no. And then I hear these two little boys start screaming, I found one! I found one! <laughs> You're like running up to me with these gigantic sticks. I don't know why they had them. And so, <laughs> and sure enough, they actually found the kids a scout, which was really, really cool. And so it was so good to see that level of excitement over some poo. <laughs> which I'm sure your dying question is, what does echidna poo look like? So echidna poo is incredibly distinctive, which is why it makes it a good citizen science project. Um, it's very long and cylinder in shape. It's about like the thickness of a five to cent, 10 cent coin. Um, can get to a, like, you know, yay big in length. It's usually a little bit curled up. And usually you can see a lot of the um, ant exoskeletons all scattered through it as well. Um, so literally in the light, you see it, it looks like glitter. Um, in the scats. <laughs> so what you guys can do uh, is download the app 
and keep an eye out for echidnas whenever you see them. But also just to spread the word. The more we, know, we, get, we can get people to know about this, the more data and the more accurate data we can get. Um, so I'm just going to quickly run through this so that they're just written on the screen. Poop puns are everywhere. It's ridiculous. Everyone thinks that I am saying things that are funny, and I'm not. <laughs> um, the media is very powerful, but it's obviously not everything, and I'm trying to as many approaches as I can to reach out. <laughs> okay. and I think that's it. Oh, wait, no, you've got to see this, sorry. It's, this, is, this, is, this was sent in to us. Uh, it's called Echidna Falling. <laughs> So that's the kind of stuff I get sent on a like regular basis. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs>